when we were when we first started talking about generative AI, I did tell the student in this particular class in cognition and computer that um, I would not mind if they actually did use ChatGPT as a writing partner for their final project. And there was a gasp. I think there's a lot happening um, with what's, uh, the development that's happening with AI and what implication it may have, but I'm sure there's a lot more discussions and expectation than what would actually, what actual impact would be made with AI. As there has been so many different hypes with different technologies over time, there will be a lot more hypes, fears, uh, hope and whatnot um, than what, actual, what impact it would actually make. Um, but I think what it comes down to at the end of the day, just like any other technology that came by before this wave of AI excitement uh, is to really understand what it means for us as human beings and for our learners that we are designing for and supporting. Even before what we are seeing with the gener generative AI, that is really the, the current um, discussion and topic, um, there has been AI very present in educational technology field more um, uh, for a longer period of time in the field of intellectual uh, intelligent uh, tutoring system, right? So I think that uh, probably will, in a way, continue to develop. But I think there has been a lot of tools that we don't know AI is is behind that has been our cognitive partner um, and cognitive tools that we have been using in an educational context for a long time as well. I feel like um, instead of there being a completely new way of technologies or, or tools that we have in the educational field, I think it will be an incremental development of what we already have in our learning uh, ecosystem and them being a little more sophisticated and uh, com uh, complex. Uh, there is one class that I teach uh, called Cognition and Computers where we explicitly explore the relationship between human cognition and technology and how it may influence our, our cognition and vice versa, especially in the context of learning. So our students are interested in looking at technology from how it may impact our learning or our cognition over a long time. Is it changing us to become a very different people? But also like how can we evaluate and also research these different tools and its potential uh, impact on, on our cognition? And so we have been using AI from as a, as a target of observation and discussion um, especially in the context of uh, learning design. I've been teaching this class for, I think, about four years now. And there, um, over time, there are different tools, but of course, they come in different variations. Um, so intelligent tutoring system is one of the, the older sort of models of AI-generated um, learning environment that uh, we have been looking into. Um, so that's one way of thinking about how technology can become a cognitive partner to human learners. There are other um, tools um, that we would consider like a Google search even that can be used uh, as a cognitive tool to help with the research and, and learning more generally. So there are different tools that we will be exploring, but also more uh, purposely in relation to what are the cognitive tasks that these AI generated tools uh, perform for the human learners and how is it supporting human cognition through the process. So there are some new developments or uh, that has caused a new inquiry from our students, um, most of all, and in the first day of class um, in January, the students started talking about, oh, I asked ChatGPT to tell me about X, Y, and Z. And so I, okay, so we have to talk about generative uh, AI. And of course, we people um, talk a lot about the text-based um, uh, generative AI, like ChatGPT, uh, but the image-based uh, generative AI has been around for a little longer, um, although it was not as widely um, discussed in the public uh, realm. So. I brought in generative AI as one example of AI of many different variants and thinking about how, what role does it take and how can we form a different cognitive but also creative partnership with these generative AI tools and being very purposeful in uh, analyzing what, what it's able to do but what, what it's able to support the human learners and being able to problem solve into learning and into creating. Um, we, I've invited uh, students to also come in with different activities that we can do um, with uh, generative AI. Um, one, in one instance, student brought in uh, an example where they used a chat GPT uh, as, as a way to become a learning partner. So uh, adopting a learning by teaching um, framework, what the student tried to do was to teach chat GPT and by teaching uh, chat GPT as a teachable agent, 
lear learner would actually develop a deeper understanding of a topic. I, I think the student did find that it was not as effective as uh, the teachable agent because it does not actually learn the way um, a programmable um, sort of teachable agent would. Um, and also the, the different way of knowledge representation, um, what has, there's a limitation in how you can interact with uh, uh, the chat GPTs nowadays because it mostly takes in the text-based um, sort of input. So I think there was a bit of a limitation in how the students envisioned the tool will react and, and learn with as a partner as opposed to what it actually did. To, I think what the learners or our students wanted to see happen as a, as a teachable agent or a learning partner is for the, the tool to understand what they were trying to teach them and to um, very transparently uh, visualize what they're learning or failing to learn. But I don't think you actually quite get that uh, transparency with this uh, tool as of yet. Uh, it could also be a different way of presenting knowledge um, with just a text-based uh, explanation or it sounds very, very eloquent, right? The, it talks very well, but then the knowledge is not always there, but it's really hard to decipher what it knows and what it doesn't know unless you know what to look out for. And I think that was uh, one of the challenges that the, our students were experiencing. Yesterday, we were talking about um, creative partnership with generative AI. Um, and we were looking at the, the image-based generative AI, but also the text-based uh, generative AI. And we're talking about human creativity and how we involve, uh, get involved with uh, creative activity. And um, the one thing that we uh, we first began by uh, coming up with an advertising phrase ourselves and analyzing the cognitive process that we may have gone through through this creative activity. Uh, and then student asked ChatGPT to go through the same uh, activity. And the results were a little different from what the students came up with. And I think from that, we were able to deduce some of the create uh, or the skills and, and knowledge um, that human beings may have in regards to creativity as opposed to the, the algorithms or the AI. When we, were, when we first started talking about generative AI, I did tell the student in this particular class in cognition and computer that um, I would not mind if they actually did use ChatGPT as a writing partner for their final project. And there was a gasp. As the students were like, oh, really? <laughs> and I think um, at that point, we, this was before we actually did have more mindful evaluation of what capacity it has and what are some of the, the possibility of using it as your learning partner and the writing partner. Um, and I think they were assuming that I thought it was okay for them to have this AI think for them. And now, through all these analysis, they do recognize that they will not be able to think for them, but the students will have to lead the thinking and the, the cognitive process. Um, while the chat GPT will provide some kind of writing support. The class is not about academic writing. And so I had to be very clear, you know, if, if it was an academic writing class, I would not ask you to use uh, a generative AI to help you with your writing. However, this class, the, um, the, the course of learning goal of this class is about them understanding and generating new ideas about the relationship between cognition and technologies. And if writing becomes a hurdle or a barrier for them um, coming up with new and creative ideas, I don't think that really should be a problem. So I think it's a different way of thinking about the tool as well. I'm, I'm a little biased because I work in the field where we do work with technology very heavily. I think uh, my peer, more immediate peers probably are not as hesitant, right? And they're probably very welcoming in different uses of uh, integration of these new tools into the learning environment. Um, I would think um, some of the people that I um, discussed with outside our immediate uh, community were a little more fearful, especially when it comes to the K-12 uh, learning space. Some of the teachers, um, that I've uh, spoken to, they they were not too clear on how they should be viewing this um, this tool. Um, but the interesting part is that they were hit with the the restriction that came from the Department of Education first. So that also does create um, the ambience or expectation as to how to perceive these new tools that are being introduced in the world as well. The the hype with any technology, whether it be AI or not, um, has always come and gone. Uh, I think after um, research and, and thoughtful evaluation of these technologies, um, regardless of what flavor or shape it comes in, I think at the end of the day, it always comes down to our more fundamental understanding of our learners and what our learners need in relation to the technology. And so 
I think the inquiry has to be driven from the learners and, and human, human, uh, human side as opposed to it being driven by the technology itself.